And let let us make an announcement here. Tomorrow, January 25th, if you're listening live tonight, USC experts from the Center for AI and Society are speaking before the Little Hoover Communi- uh, Commission uh, for its first hearing on the applications of artificial intelligence in California. Um, USC experts will explain how AI has been used as an effective tool to disseminate public health information, to spread the, uh, uh, to prevent the spread of HIV among homeless youth, and uh, a lot of other things. Uh, joining us tonight are co-directors for the USC Center for Artificial Intelligence in Society, Milan Tembe. And Eric Rice, uh, 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 Milan Tembe, is a computer um, associate computer professor at the USC Viterbi School of Engineering. And Eric Rice uh, works at the USC Dwork Peck School of Social Work. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, especially given the... Your head's up north pretty quick to get to the meeting. Um, uh, Professor Tembe, I guess I'll start with you. For our listeners, uh, give us an idea of what you're talking about when you talk about AI, artificial intelligence. So uh, AI is um, whenever we see computers doing tasks that might require us to do, uh, might require intelligence for us to do, uh, it's a spectrum uh, in the sense that uh, some of the simplest things uh, that we may see uh, computers do could be considered as AI to all the way to driverless cars, which you were just talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, all the way in between uh, recommendation systems for, you know, what, what movie to watch next, uh, what books to buy. Uh, you know, when you start typing uh, on your computer uh, for a search and the search string automatically completes, that's also AI. And so AI is lots of different things, um, and it's a whole spectrum of things that we see uh, being done by our computers uh, as we interact with them. And um, a lot of people I know think of uh, robots and AI as being synonymous. When that is not the case at all, although robots can certainly use AI in their programming. Right, right. Uh, and so the field of robotics, uh, uh, is, you know, it's it could be considered as part of AI, uh, but uh, uh, it's not. AI is not just robots. AI is all of these other things. The kind of work that uh, we do at our center uh, is not uh, focused as much on robotics. Uh, it is really um, uh, using different kinds of AI programs uh, for assisting for public health dissemination uh, or uh, public safety and security or conservation. So it's not focused on robots. And, and that was one of the really fascinating things uh, when I was reading about um, uh, what you do, uh, both you and, and Professor uh, Rice, um, that the areas that are involved are so diverse. We can talk about public health. I would like to actually. Uh, also environment uh, uh, concerns uh, beyond just a workplace automation and such like that. Uh, B- B- Professor Rice, maybe you can tell us some of the social benefits of AI that can be uh, used or, or, or concerns. Sure. I think one of the things that's really exciting about what's going on in our center is that we're trying to use and develop new cutting-edge AI technologies to tackle social problems, to, to fight social injustice. So I've been working on uh, issues around homelessness, uh, especially for homeless adolescents, for the last 15 years or so. And working with, with Millen has given me an opportunity to bring in new technologies that can enhance the interventions that we are trying to do with these young people. And in specific, you know, this one that we've done with HIV prevention, using these algorithms to help us figure out which uh, youth in these communities can become our ambassadors for disseminating public health messages about HIV prevention. And it's been, you know, really effective. And some of the other problems that we're tackling are issues like suicide prevention, uh, substance abuse. Uh, we're looking at, uh, we're working with uh, LA Housing uh, or with LASA, LA Housing Service Authority, trying to help them to figure out uh, which sorts of uh, housing interventions are working the best and can we help them to optimize how they are deploying those interventions so that they can make the most uh, with the scarce resources that we have to fight mm-hmm. homelessness. So it's, it's a really exciting area with lots of possibilities. And, you know, and I think that there's been a lot of concern about 
you know, ethical issues and not as much of, an, of a look at this, this other vision that we share, Milan and I, that is we can use these technologies to tackle social problems. Right. Um, uh, well, I and and uh, I, I'm wondering uh, e- either or both of you can uh, can tell us what um, it, you're speaking before the uh, what's called the Little Hoover Commission. Now it's its first hearing on the applications of AI in California. Uh, how did uh, how did this hearing come about? Did did you have uh, something to do with the hearing, or or what what is the background? Why is this hearing happening, and how did uh, how did both of you get involved? So um, <clears throat> the hearing is a broader hearing about um, AI uh, in, in California. Our portion focuses on AI for social good. Uh, as you rightly pointed out, there are concerns related to. Uh, loss of jobs uh, related to uh, ethical and moral issues, uh, legal implications of AI, and so on and so forth. So th- there is um, uh, a need to look at AI in all of its aspects. Our particular vision is really Eric, that Eric and I share is to say, how can we use AI for social good? And that's the emphasis that we want to give. Uh, in this case, um, uh, people from the Little Hoover Commission reached out to us to discuss the work that we had done at our center, focusing on uh, the types of social justice issues that Eric just spoke about, uh, some of the other work uh, that we've done with conservation, for example. And uh, it is as a result of that discussion uh, that this hearing came about, and we were asked to come here. We're grateful for that to allow us to uh, share this vision of uh, using AI for social good. Yes, yeah, that that is good that you've been asked to do that. By the way, uh, there's going to be a live, I, I, uh, there's going to be a live webcast that's going to be um, available at uh, 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 was it calchannel.com uh, there um, tomorrow. So uh, I just want to let people know about that. Um, this week, um, the, there's a count of the homeless here in uh, California. Yeah, counting the homeless. And I'm. Uh, Reminded of our, um, a friend of our show, uh, Mark Horvath, who was, uh, we've had on a couple of times talking about uh, the surprising um, importance of technology to the homeless. Uh, having oh, yeah. Mark's a great guy. I know him. Oh, all yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, he is a great guy, and I admire him. Uh, and um, so, so about the technology and the homeless, I mean, um, how... How do you foresee uh, AI being able to help? Sure. Um, Maybe, maybe Eric, you can give uh, the first part, and then I can talk about the AI part of it. Sounds great. Sounds great. I mean, in in this case, we're not doing a lot by way of putting technology in the hands of homeless so much as we're putting technology, uh, this new technology, specifically in the hands of um, the uh, social workers that are doing work with uh, homeless youth in different drop-in centers around LA, like Safe Place for Youth and My Friend's Place and the Youth Center on Highland. And so, but I've certainly done a lot of work in the past around how connected a lot of homeless individuals are, how important technology is to them. And so certainly there's there are new horizons that we could pursue around uh, AI that could be specifically targeting you know, homeless individuals as consumers, but in our case, we're, we're, we're focused a little bit more on the on the service providers and helping them with this particular technology. Uh huh. And, uh, and Professor, so the, Ch- mm-hmm. go ahead. Uh, and so the way uh, the way uh, the AI sort of comes into play here is that we uh, harness the social network of these youths in order to uh, spread information. So specifically, we can't. Uh, uh, talk to each and every one of these youth because there's just uh, unfortunately too many of them. So mm-hmm. if uh, we can uh, have key ambassadors, peer leaders, who we could educate about um, uh, health concerns, uh, HIV, and then have them spread that information to the non-peer leaders that, uh, who we did not educate, then in this way the social network can amplify the message we give and spread it more rapidly You know, in, the, in their social network. The question is, who are the right peer leaders? Who are these ambassadors that would be most effective in spreading information? It turns out that they're not the most popular youth in the network. Uh, the AI is able to figure out people who are 
strategically placed in the network who would be most effective in spreading this information. And that's the that's the AI part of it that's coming in to figure out how to fig, you know who are the right uh, peer leaders who, based on the properties of uh, their placement in the network. And 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 a uh, and lately a problem has been with hepatitis A. Uh, are, are you uh, are you uh, concerned about that? And uh, if so, uh, in in what respect? I mean, I'm certainly concerned about the, the this spread of hepatitis A. I mean, I don't think that we have been tackling that. We have not been tackling that specific issue directly with one of our our programs. Uh, but I think, especially if it doesn't become contained, it's an area that we would want to pursue because it's becoming an increasing public health concern. I think. Yes. And, uh, Professor Tembe, you mentioned conservation. I'm, I'm wondering how um, AI can um, affect uh, conservation efforts. So in um, wildlife parks, uh, we work a lot with Wildlife Conservation Society in Uganda. The challenge is that poachers, um, you know, kill lots of animals by putting traps. So they uh, trap these animals, and then they, you know, when the animal is trapped with the elephants or rhinos and so on, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it sort of gets trapped, and then the poachers come and kill them. Now, if we can figure out where the poachers are going to put the traps to, to trap these animals, um, and get them removed before the animals uh, walk into them, then we would be able to save uh, these animals. And that's what we've been able to do, is to predict where the snares, these traps, would be placed wow. and have them removed. And um, in this way, uh, you know, in, some, in one case, for example, uh, they found a dead elephant, so poachers were active in an area that we predicted, and then we also suggested that they look further and they found the snares that they removed. So... Uh, Poachers were active in an area. They were killing elephants, but before they could kill the next set of elephants, the snares that they were going to deploy were removed. And so the AI can help us predict where poachers will uh, put snares, get them removed, and in this way uh, save endangered animals, as we've done uh, working with Wildlife Conservation Society. So you're saving endangered animals as well as endangered humans. That's glad, <laughs> glad to know. Uh, I have one last question for each of you, and that's really, um, uh, and, and we'll start with you, uh, uh, Professor Rice. Um, what's the most exciting thing you see on the horizon involving AI? Oh, I think the most exciting thing is, in a sense, the, the, the computational power, the ability to create these algorithms that can make predictions in ways that statistics couldn't do or that, you know, human beings have trouble with. And I think that because of being able to make those predictions and then making plans around those predictions, we have the ability to have new strategies where we can really um, be more thoughtful about how we uh, use scarce resources, especially in the context of public health and social work where you oftentimes have so few resources and so you need to be as strategic as you can be to, to make the most impact that you can and this gives us the chance to, to do that. It's really, that's the exciting part for me. Yeah. Professor Tom Bay, same question for you. What's the most exciting thing you see on the horizon? Uh, exciting. Uh, I'm sorry? As I am. I mean, sir, so for me, uh, the exciting things um, uh, tend to be in terms of the actual impact that we are able to see of AI. I've been working in AI for over 30 years now. And things that we could only dream of 30 years ago in terms of what we could achieve with AI are today almost becoming a reality. Uh, you know, 30 years ago, the cars were um, uh, driving at two miles per hour, the autonomous vehicles, <laughs> uh, very, very slowly uh, uh, lumbering along. And now we have, uh, we, we're almost there. So these are exciting times for AI in terms of what has been achieved. And, and the f future looks bright, particularly if we focus uh, AI towards these causes of social good, of social justice, of conservation. And that's really extremely exciting to see where AI could be headed with these types of things. Yeah, yeah that rather than Skynet. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Yeah, quite right. Quite right. <laughs> All right, Professors uh, Eric Rice and Milan Tambe, uh, both uh, co-directors of USC's Center for Artificial Intelligence in Society, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. And and and, it, thank, it, thank you. and, and is there a site uh, that you want to send us to, or or should we just uh, watch the CalChannel.com uh, mm -hmm. live webcast tomorrow? 
Well, the CalChannel.com live webcast is great if you want to see our faces. If you want to check out more of the work that we're doing, go to cais.usc.edu, and that's where we have a lot of our content up for the public to check out. Could you read that URL one more time? cais.usc.edu. So it's case, C-A-I-S, dot usc.edu. Okay, and both professors uh, Tom Bay and Rice will be appearing before the Little Hoover Commission tomorrow, January 25th, beginning at 9.30 a.m. Thank you both again for joining us today. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, so much. Thank you for Thank you. all Thank your you. great work. Yeah, Thank really. you so much. Thank okay. you.